Week 12 is here. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy early Thanksgiving. Happy Kwanzaa. Whatever the hell you're celebrating this week. Eat some turkey. Eat some pie. Eat some gravy. Whatever the fuck. Enjoy Thanksgiving. But this is about football. There's football on Thanksgiving and we got to win your matchups. Week 11 wasn't too bad. I feel like I had a pretty accurate day for the most part. Gus Edwards is still scoring touchdowns. He's my new Zach Moss. He's my new enemy number one. But on to week 12. And let me just be clear with this. I'm making this Tuesday night, okay? Because we have so many games on Thursday and Friday. There's a lot of lingering injuries out there. I'm not going to have the full data up until game time because I'm doing this early. So... If some drastic injury happens, Cooper Cup is out, Kenneth Walker is ruled out, someone breaks their leg, someone's all of a sudden playing, yada, 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 and I, what I said in this video doesn't exactly add up to that point, it will be updated in full on BDGE.co. Again, if a ranking needs moving because of an injury that I didn't address in this video because it happened afterwards, you can find my response to it in bdg.co. You can find all the rankings on quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, kickers, defenses, whatever you want. Today we're talking about running backs and wide receivers. Let's get into it. Let's win a day on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm going to start with the wide receivers first. Let's just address it. I just addressed him earlier. Cooper Cup. I feel like he's going to play. He's leaning towards playing. Cardinals are a very favorable matchup. But if he doesn't, Puka Nakua is back to wide receiver one status. No matter what, even if Cup is in, Puka is a very startable wide receiver two. You're starting both of these guys no matter what. But if Cup is out, you could pretty much lock in a win for this week if you're a Puka Nakua owner. That's what the streets are saying. Uh, I'm not rooting for injuries, but if you're a Puka owner... You got good things coming for you on Thanksgiving. And then right behind him, I'll talk about him real quick. Jay Jettas. Look, wide receiver nine or top 10 wide receiver where I have him at is a little high because when he comes back, he's he's probably going to get ramped up a little bit and not going to be the full 100%. And he might not even be playing this week. But if he is playing this week, you're going to start him no matter what I say. So I just threw him up here early so I remember to talk about him. That ranking right there is for me, for me rather than you. We both know you're going to start no matter what. Let's get on to one of the hottest offenses in the NFL, the Houston Texans. Tank Dell is my boy. I see him as a wide receiver one for the rest of the season. Some things to knock about him is we haven't seen the full healthy Texans offense in play. We haven't fully seen Tank Dell, Noah Brown, Nico Collins, and Dalton Schultz consistent play. Someone's always out, whether it's Nico, Noah, Tank. So there is a little mystery there whose role is what when they're all there. But regardless, Tank Dell's wide receiver 15 on the year while missing a game and a half due to concussion. He's top 15 in points per game. The dude is him. And in his past three games, he's averaging like 22 points a game. The Jaguars against wide receivers is a pretty favorable matchup. The Texans played them earlier this year and beat the shit out of them. I, I think Jacksonville's not going to let that happen again, but we'll, 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 we'll see. I think we're in for a good game. And then Nico Collins, he's wide receiver 17 on the year. Both these guys are very strong wide receiver two options in must starts no matter what. Michael Pittman. I'll go ahead and talk about Pittman and Josh Downs, who's lower there at the bottom, because the Bucks are just letting anyone have a heyday in their secondary. Brandon Ayuk had one of his best games of the year the week before, or it might have been two weeks before, but CJ Stroud cooked him a little bit ago, and I see no reason Michael Pittman can't do the same thing. Pittman's been very, very consistent on the year. He's a top 20 wide receiver. The Bucks give up the fourth most fantasy points and the second most yards to receivers. And Josh Downs, I said I'd talk about him. He's been rough the past two weeks, especially if you've been starting him, just hoping he bounces back. However, before Josh Downs' knee injury, he was averaging 14 points a game in about a month straight. So we saw Josh Downs' potential and what he can do on a consistent level. And then the knee injury came around and everything fell apart. However, he's coming off of the bye this week. He's had extra long rest to get over that. I think he'll be a lot closer to 100% than it was what he was two weeks ago. And you can expect those consistent flex play levels out of him. I think it's a start, especially on Thanksgiving against the Buccaneers. This is a favorable matchup for him to ease back into off of injury and off the bye. One guy that I have very high in the rankings is Gabe David. Let me be straight here. Let me be very clear. I have zero analysis for you on Gabe Davis. Zero. I don't have one number I'm throwing at you right now. Not one logical take, but it just feels like a Gabe Davis week, doesn't it? Doesn't it feel like a Gabe Davis week? Isn't he due? He's due. Like that's that's all I'm going to sell you on. I'm not going to mention the fact that the Eagles give up the most fantasy points to wide receivers. I'm not going to mention that, but Gabe Davis just feels due. I'm, I'm admitting he's high on the list. And if I was forced to make the most accurate list ever and my life depend on it, he's probably not going to be this high, but he's due. The uh, Brady Bunch I kind of want to talk about here, the all elite level, Garrett Wilson, Jalen Waddle, Chris Olave, that little chunk right there, 
these motherfuckers are annoying, man, you know. Outside of last week for a month straight, Garrett Wilson was able to put up 80 yards a game. He was able to give us some help. But now I don't know what to expect out of the random QB play. Zach Wilson's all of a sudden QB3 on the depth chart. The Miami actually has a very underrated defense. Jalen Ramsey is back. He's hit or miss at some points. But I, I, the more I'm looking at it, I might want to lower Garrett Wilson. I think he's a start. He's a strong wide He's a strong. Very high wide receiver three, low in wide receiver two, but damn, he's annoying. Jalen Waddle, look, Tyreek Hill, I didn't talk about him earlier. He gets a pass. He's the number one wide receiver in the NFL. He's on pace for 2,000 yards. He's the GOAT. Jalen Waddle, you don't get a pass, okay? You've yet to show a glimpse of what you were last year on a consistent level, and the Jets give up the fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. I, I just can't cut you a break. At any given point, based on this Miami team and this Miami offense, they could shine, but I'm not going to get myself in that silly narrative and just hope into the dreamland of the high end of Jalen Watt. Chris Olave, same thing. I'm technically low on him compared to the experts, but Atlanta's got a sneaky good pass D. They allow the 10th fewest fantasy points to wide receivers, and he's 24th in points per game this year. I have him as wide receiver 26. That adds up if you ask me. He's got zero games of 20 points, and if we're talking half PPR, I'm tired of the experts ranking him as this top 10, top 12 guy every week no matter what. He deserves to be outside of the top 20, and he is. Horton Sutton, I got burnt by a little bit last week. I said he's worth a flex play, but I... Admittingly, I was favoring sitting him rather than being high on him. And I I don't know. I still don't believe in it being a sustainable system. Scoring eight touchdowns in 10 games, 80% of your games. And the Browns give up the second fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. And in a similar matchup, when the Broncos had to face a also very good pass D against the Jets, Corton Sutton had less than two fantasy points. So my logic tells me he's not a great play again, but history has shown it doesn't matter. He's a... Uh, Going to score a touchdown and going to have enough of a cushion to make him worth a start. All right, Calvin Ridley, Jamar Chase, and we're out on the wide receivers. I don't know what to tell you on Calvin Ridley, man. I'm going to give you the facts. I'm going to give you the information. I'm going to give you what you need to know. You determine what you do with it. When Zay Jones plays, Calvin Ridley's that dude. When he doesn't, he is dog water. In the four games Zay Jones played this year, in those same four games, Calvin Ridley's averaged nine targets and 20 fantasy points per game. When he doesn't, when Zay Jones is out, Ridley averages only 5.6 targets in seven fantasy points. I don't know why the pendulum swings that big. You know, I could get into the fact that I believe it spreads the offense. I think it makes it a lot easier for Ridley to get open and it changes the schematics the team can use. But let's be honest, I'm no coach. I'm yapping a little bit. I'm just going off of what my eyes tell me when I watch the team. I'm not going to act like I fully know that. I think with Zay Jones... You could believe in Calvin really a little bit more, but I'm not all of a sudden putting him again as this top 20 guy based off one week. I just, I'm just not doing that. It hurts too much. Houston's got an underrated pass D. I like him. Don't love him. And then Jamar Chase. Me and Nick just talked about this. Nick said he believes he's still a top 10, top 15 wide receiver, even without Joe Burrow, because he's just that dude. Just like Garrett Wilson's a top 25 wide receiver without Aaron Rodgers, because you still believe in the talent of the player. Me, not so much. Maybe I have him a little bit low. But I think if you're just, like, if I'm being honest, I'm just not betting on a Bengals team that just lost all of their mojo. Jamar Chase is an emotional wide receiver. Joe Burrow's his best friend. Am I getting a little theoretical right now? Sure. But it's fantasy football. I need to talk about the fantasy side of things of which we need to infer and don't know about. Jamar Chase, read into whatever narrative you want. Talk yourself into whatever you want. But to me, he's no better than a random wide receiver three or flex play. I just can't talk myself into Jake Browning making him a top 15 wide receiver this week. If I had to bet my life, does he score enough points to finish as a wide receiver one or high end wide receiver two? No, he doesn't. Let's get into some RBs. Remember, before I get into the running backs, if there's any wide receivers I didn't talk about or I should have talked about some injury happened before, while you're watching this video. You could find my updated answer to the question you have on bdge.co where you have where I have all the wide receivers ranked from one to a million. Probably like one to like 120, but you get what I'm saying. One to a lot. Kickers, running backs, QBs, any questions you got, bdge.co. All right, running backs, like I said, just want to say this. Austin Eckler's a start no matter what, but the dude looks slow as hell. Okay. Jameer Gibbs, I'm going I'm to admit I was a little bit wrong last week. I still had him as like RB13, RB12, but I thought it was a little ridiculous to have him RB7. And here I am just completely forfeiting that take, putting him at RB6. Packers give it the 11th most points, 6th most rushing yards, not a great run D. Still think Monty's going to get most goal line work. Gibbs has kind of gotten lucky the past few weeks getting a stolen goal line touchdown here and there. But the dude's so explosive. He's so involved in the passing game. He's, a, he's an RB1 for the rest of the year. Brian Robinson, I don't give a shit about the matchup. I talk about him every week and I'm back again. 
Cowboys give up the six fewest fantasy points to running backs, but I don't care. He's the RB4 in the year. He played the Eagles twice, the number one read run defense. So I don't care about the Cowboys being number six. And Robinson still had his own, held his own, averaging 10 fantasy points against the Eagles in both games. I'll, uh, I'll take that. B-Rob is him. Derrick Henry, based on the past few, two performances from Henry, I'd, I'd start to get concerned. But now he gets to face the Panthers, who get the second most fantasy points, the second most rushing yards, and the most rushing touchdowns. Let the king eat. I may or may not have him in deal or no deal if you watch our trivia channel. So yeah, I got a little bit of a little bit on the line for Derrick Henry for those of you who keep up with trivia. But either way, the matchup is there. I'm a little bit lower on Brees Hall than most. Just I, I just think he's kind of reliant. Not reliant, but a lot of running backs are. You need to score a touchdown to be a great fantasy back. And this Jets offense is just so in shambles. I don't know what we're going to get out of QB play this week. I'm not betting on this offense to get him in a position to score a touchdown. And therefore, he's got a little bit of tax that lowers him for me on my rank. A-Chan, Mostert, kind of skipped over Mostert. Look, I'm no doctor. They're kind of on a short week. I think A-Chan's fine. He said after the game he wanted to play through it. He's fine. And most players do. They got that dog mentality, but the coaches held him out for a precaution. I think with them being cautious, he'll be okay this week. If he plays, he's worth an RB2 start. And Mostert, I might be a little bit high on him, pretty high on him, but this just factors in. While I think A-Chain is worth a start and worth a play, I still think he's not going to have a full 100% go, and most are still going to be the guy. I think they can run up the score on the Jets, regardless of the defense. Their run defense is not half as good as their pass defense, and most might get a score too. Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet. I don't think Kenneth Walker is playing, so therefore he's at that low-end RB2, but if he doesn't, Zach Charbonnet is your guy. I don't think Zach Charbonnet is his weak winner. 49 has got a tough run D. It's not the best matchup in the world, but... He's going to get all the volume in the world. He's going to be the Joe Mixon, the Rashad White of his offense, where it doesn't matter who they play. If you're the guy, you're the guy. Volume is king. I think Walker will be out, and Charbonnet does deserve that bump as an RB2. Talked about Gus earlier. I think he's extremely touchdown reliant. I think Keaton Mitchell might ease into a bigger workload as the year goes on. But against the Chargers run D, who's not very good, this team's going to score a lot more touchdowns the rest of this year, and Gus Edwards is going to benefit from that. He's the RB6 on the year. I can't, I can't diss him much more anymore. Devin Singletary, the man the past few weeks. Him and Jalen Warren have both been the guy the past few weeks. they both been that dude. Pierce, if he's in, I definitely think he's going to hurt Singletary's performance a little bit, and you're not going to be in love with him. Jaguars run defense isn't that bad, so I don't love him as much as his past two weeks have shown the love he should be getting. But he's still worth the flex play because even if Pierce is in, he's still going to be eased in. And But Warren, uh, sorry, I'm yapping a little about Singletary because I want to get to Warren. Warren's my guy, and Nick loves him too. He's a great player. He deserves to be the RB1 in this offense, but there's one thing to consider. Is Matt Canada getting fired? Is this going to change the role the running backs serve with the new offensive coordinator? Could it be, could it be good? The new OC believes in Jalen Warren and makes him the full-time starter and sees that Najee Harris is slow and fat and not that good and takes him out of the game. It gives Warren the work he deserves, yes, but it could be the vice versa where for some reason the new OC likes Najee, doesn't like Warren, and all of a sudden all the momentum might be behind Warren, but throw a goddamn wrench into that situation, that plan, that smooth process, and things could change. I'm willing to take the risk because I believe in Warren as a player, but something something to consider. Two guys I'm super high on, even though the ranking doesn't say it, is the Browns running backs. Jerome Ford, Kareem Hunt, and this is mainly because of the matchup. The Broncos let any running back room eat on them. The Vikings last week, Josh Dobbs ate, and both of the running backs ate. Both Madison and Chandler went off for over 70 rushing yards. I don't know why the Browns can't do the same exact thing with Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt. Based on these rankings, it might not seem like I'm super high on them because they're like RB27 or 28, whatever they are, 29. But there's just so many big names in front of them, I can't put them up. Trust me, I like them. If you're if they're on your team, you're starting them. They're a great flex play. They're a strong low-end RB2. I just I just can't throw them above those guys up there. On a week with zero buys, there's some big hitters out there. I, I just can't have them jump. Joe Mixon, kind of the same vibes as Jamar Chase. I, I just don't want anything a part of this offense that just lost everything that matters to them. It, it just takes the energy out of the locker room i'm not in their room i'm reading into it a little bit uh, i'm going heavily off the vibes but i'm just not big on the Bengals. if you have mix on your team there's no way you're benching them but i'm just being real realistic man if if his name wasn't joe mixon if you didn't have so much invested in him this was just some random rb1 on a team that just lost their qb1 i'm probably not playing royce freeman i'm very high on him and this is something royce freeman is a player you need to be checking the bdge.co website to see if I change my ranking on them because the Rams running back room is hard to get a grip on. 
I think the Cardinals are the perfect matchup for whoever the RB1 is in this room. They give it the third most fantasy points to running backs, and right now I'm leaning Freeman. Again, check the rankings in case something changes, some news comes out. That's the way I'm leaning. Keaton Mitchell, he's not on the list. He's just outside of it. I got him at like RB33, 32. He's a guy I really like. He, he might be just someone I want to be great. And I think he's super fun to watch. He's very explosive. If you want to have some fun on Thanksgiving weekend, Sunday Night Football actually versus the Chargers. This is a favorable matchup. He's speedy. He got a bigger role against the Bengals. I, I wouldn't mind throwing him in the flex. He's he's worth a play for me. We'll see. But ladies and gentlemen, that's uh that's your weekly rankings. That's week 12. That's Thanksgiving in the books. I feel like I yapped a lot today, but I feel like, feel like I got back to the old rankings you guys usually ask about. So... I touched on a shit ton of players. Let me know what you thought of this video. Do you like this version? Do you like the other version? Do you want me to do something completely different? Do you want me to just shut up and keep yapping? Tell me. Happy Thanksgiving. And uh, good luck in your matchups in week 12. Check out mine in the next trade video. Trade deadline is this week. So if there's any moves you're thinking about making, we answered a lot of questions just before I recorded this. Go check that out to make a final decision for the trade deadline. I'm yapping again. As always, of course, ladies and gentlemen, thank you and good night. <laughs> Get wild.